Hi everyone. Um, this video is going to um, follow up on the discussion of the question 15.9 um, that I did um, in the workshop on Wednesday. If you recall, the question gives us a trial balance of this business called A. Evans as at 30th of June 20 X3. And there are some additional information there about the inventory and the bank loan. And we are asked to prepare the statement of profit and loss for a particular period, which is for the year ended 30th of June 20 X3 and the statement of financial position as at that date. So this is the two reports that um, we did in the workshop, if you remember. Um, on the left, you have the income statement for the year ended 30th of June 20 X3. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm using the term income statement now because this is the new name for the statement of profit and loss. And on the right is your statement of financial position as at 30th of June 20 X3. Remember I said the difference between the statement of financial position and the income statement is that the statement of financial position is as at a particular point in time, whereas the income statement is for a period of time. So from the trial balance, I have extracted the items that make up the income statement. So if you recall, we start off with sales and then we minus return inwards to give you net sales. And then you less cost of sales. Cost of sales is an expense. It's an expense relating to the goods that you have bought to sell. So how much were the cost of the goods that you had sold. And how you arrive at that is you take your opening inventory, add your purchases, less your closing inventory. That will give you your cost of sale of 49600 And if you take your net sales, less your gross profit, sorry, your cost of sales, that will give you your gross profit. That, that section of the income statement is actually called the trading account. Following the trading account, you will then add any other income that you may have other than your normal sales, such as interest received in this case. And then you less out all other expenses that you had incurred to carry out your trading activity. So in this case, you have things like carriage outwards, rent and rates, light and heat, until bank interest. So the total expense is 3430 So if you take your gross profit at interest received, 31820, minus your expenses, you will get your net profit for that period. That part of the income statement is what we call the profit and loss account. All right, And then the profit that you have made will go towards your equity, which is reported in the statement of financial position. And if you look at the statement of financial position, um, this is a vertical format of the statement of financial position. We classify assets and liabilities into non-current and current. I've explained to you that non-current means that you can use it over a long period of time, more than one year, from the date of the balance sheet. And current assets are those that you can use or you can convert to cash within 12 months from the date of that balance sheet. Similarly for liabilities, non-current liabilities are those that you must pay beyond one 
one year from the balance sheet date or the statement of financial position date. Whereas current liabilities are those that you have to settle, you have to pay within 12 months from the statement of financial position date. So you list them down accordingly like this and you have now your non-current assets at your current assets will give you total assets. And how we build the equity is that the equity is split into three parts, the capital, and you add any net profits. If they are not losses, remember you have to less. And then if they are drawings, you have to less them to arrive at the total equity of 53,610. Then you have your non-current liability of 20,000 and two current liability items there that make up 5,030. So if you add your equity plus your non-current liability and plus your current liability, you have 79,140, which is equal to your total assets. This means that the accounting equation has rule has been met. So this is how we use the trial balance to actually extract information to prepare your income statement and your statement of financial position. Now, what I didn't discuss was that um, the statement of financial position, the accounts in the statement of financial position you see on the right are what we call permanent accounts. Because the statement of financial position is carried forward indefinitely as long as your business uh, is continuing, the balances in these accounts are also carried forward. So every year you report the updated balances. So these are permanent accounts. Well, while on the left when you see your income statement, most of the accounts there are what we call temporary accounts. They are only open for one accounting period to record the transactions that occurred during that one accounting period. What we haven't done is that I need to now show you how do you close all these accounts because the temporary accounts after they've recorded one, one period's transactions must be zeroized, must be cleaned up and whatever balances there must be put into some form of permanent accounts. So this is what I'm going to show you now in the next final part of this question. The other thing that I also want to um, show you is that in the trial balance, the inventory balance shown in the first trial balance earlier is always the opening inventory. The inventory that you had at the beginning of that accounting period. What you had when you came into the store at the start of that period. How then do you record the closing inventory? How do you put the amount in into your accounts. That's also something we need to talk about in the final part of this exercise. So here we have um, some of the temporary accounts and I've also extracted two permanent accounts that are important in what we are going to do which is to close um, all the temporary accounts. Okay. The two permanent accounts that is involved is one is the capital. Why the capital? Because all the temporary accounts in the income statement belong to sales and expenses, revenues and expenses. These, were all, these are all part of the equity accounts. So when we close them, we will all close them into the capital account. Uh, why I chose the inventory account as another important permanent account is because if you remember I said that the, the balance in the trial balance of the inventory account here as shown here represents the opening stocks. So what we need to do is to clear off the opening stocks and put in the closing stock. How we're going to do this is, remember, we'll start from the sales, all the revenue accounts. We will close it 
and then all the expenses accounts we will close it but we will close it according to how I report the income statement earlier remember the first part of the income statement shows the trading account and the second part shows the profit and loss account so we'll start off by taking the sales account this is from the trial balance if you, if you remember, if you look back at the trial balance, the sales has a balance, a credit balance of 81640 We now need to clear this. We now need to close this account and transfer it into the trading account. So we now open a new temporary account just to record down the sales as well as the purchases uh, and the cost of sales. So how we do this is I'm going to clear off the sales account here by debiting it. By Once I debit the account with the total balance, this sales account would have been zeroized. There will not be any more balance. I will take that balance and credit it into my trading account shown here. So the balance in the sales account have now been transferred to the trading account and the sales account would be cleared off. Then we take, because there were sales returns, there were return inwards, that is related to sales, that's also a temporary account and we need to clear that off as well. As you know, the return inwards account has got a debit balance, a reverse of the sales. So now what I want to do is zeroize it by transferring the balance. How I transfer it is I credit the return inwards and I debit the trading account. So I've transferred this 840 into the trading account. That would again zeroize my return inwards. So now what I've done is I've actually cleared the uh, sales and the return inwards into my trading account. Now let's look at the cost of sales. Remember the first item in the cost of sales was inventory. That inventory represents the opening inventory. So what I need to do now is I need to clear off, bring the opening inventory as shown in my permanent account here by crediting it because it has a debit balance and I transfer it into my trading account as a debit because it's a debit balance in the inventory account. So this will clear off my opening inventory there. Now I have my purchases accounts and what I do is I do the same. I The purchases account has a, a debit balance and what I'll do is I will transfer that amount into my trading account. And that would zero rise my purchases uh, account here. And remember there was return outwards. Okay, That return outwards would have a credit balance of 960. And I want to clear it off. I will debit it and transfer it into my temporary account. Of, uh, trading account sorry so that would uh, zero rise my return outwards account one last item remains which is I need to record my closing inventory and how I do that is I'm going to take out from the trading account by crediting the expenses all these are expenses so I've got to credit the expenses out by 4920 and put it back into my inventory account. So my inventory account now, if I were to balance it, I would now have debits more than credits by 4920 and that would give me a debit balance of 4920. That has now changed my inventory balance from an opening balance to now a closing balance of 4920. Okay, so that's how 
we sort out the purchases, return outwards, uh, the opening and the closing inventory, the sales, the return inwards. So now what happens is if you look at the trading account, we now have all the necessary entries in there to calculate gross profits. And what we do now is to balance the account. The total credits exceeds the total debits by 31,200. That amount is actually your gross profit. So now what we do is we transfer that gross profit now to a PL summary account. That PL summary account will be now used to actually deduct any other expenses that we may have and also close off those expenses account and also transfer any other revenues that may have and close off those accounts as well. So remember, we had the interest received. Interest received would have a credit balance. I'm not showing it here. It's the same process as sales uh, that we did earlier. So the interest received would have a credit balance of 620. I debit the interest received account and I credit PL summary. And then I look at my expenses. Remember, we had carriage outwards. The carriage outwards balance would have been 390 debit balance. I credit that carriage in, uh, outwards account and I debit my PL summary here. And I do the same for rent and rates, crediting my rent and rates, debiting PL summary. Same for light and heat, I credit light and heat, debit my PL summary. Similarly for telephone and postage, similar print and stationery and bank interest. So with that, I would have closed off all my expenses accounts. I now are able to close off my PL summary account here by calculating the total credits again and what is the total debits and the difference if credits more than the debits will be a profit. All right, and in this case, it's 28390. And what we do with that profit is that we are going to transfer that profit to the capital account by debiting the PL summary, taking out all the excess credits, and crediting it into the capital account. So if you see now, my PL summary has also been cleared. There's no more balances here. There's no more balances in the trading account. Now let's look at the capital account. The capital account has got the balance opening balance of 39980. This is the net profit that we had transferred from the PL summary. One last item in the capital account is that we have drawings. The drawings is also a temporary account. We have had drawings amounted to 14760 for that period. This is shown in the balance brought down. This amount must now be transferred to the capital account. You credit the drawing account and you debit the capital account. By debiting the capital account, you reduce the amount of credits. You now can balance off your capital account. The total credits is 68370 and therefore you have a balance, a credit balance of 53610, which you can then brought, bring down for the next period. So I hope you can follow how we have closed off temporary accounts, zero rise them, clean them up, clear the accounts, because their objective is to only record transactions for a particular period. Once that period is over, it should be zeroized. Whatever balances needs to be transferred. And remember, the sales and purchases accounts are transferred to the trading account. Whatever profits calculated there are transferred to the PL summary account. And then you tr close off all your expenses accounts and other income accounts to this PL summary. Whatever profits are then transferred to the ultimate equity account, which is the capital account. And also remember to close off your drawings. 
So once you've done that, if you do another trial balance, your trial balance now is cleaner. All you see are only accounts that are permanent that represents accounts that is shown in the statement of financial position. So there's no more revenue accounts, there's no more expenses account. Your inventory account now shows the closing balance. So this is now this account is now ready for the next accounting period. So when you go to the next accounting period, you open a new sales account, you open a new purchases account. But your capital, your assets, your liability accounts will continue to use the balance brought forward. So this is how the whole process of closing the accounts uh, is done. I hope you can follow this exercise. So remember the three things that um, we talked about in this particular exercise is in relation to the trial balance, the use of the trial balance, how we extract information from the trial balance to prepare your financial reports. The type of financial reports, the income statement or the statement of profit and loss to the statement of financial position. And then you have temporary accounts and you have permanent accounts. The need to close temporary accounts and permanent accounts are carried forward. So that's the uh, learning outcomes of this exercise. Thanks and see you later.